Guess who's back, ladies and gentlemen. We are back in this chair, back talking about Jacksonville Jaguar football. Your boy has been busy beyond belief covering the NAIA World Series, which was a great time, and a big congratulations to Tennessee Wesleyan for winning the 2019 NAIA World Series. It was a great World Series to cover. It's right here in my hometown of Lewis and Idaho, and I love doing it. This is my second year uh, covering the series, so it was a great, great time. But you guys are going to be happy and relieved to know this, that this week is exclusive Jacksonville Jaguar content, ladies and gentlemen. And today we are starting Position Outlooks for 2018. In 19 and I'm very excited to start doing this and I'm really excited to get going so we're gonna hop right into the video with the first position we're out looking and that position is the wide receiver position ladies and gentlemen this is the Jaguars 2019 positional outlook the wide receivers without further ado ladies and gentlemen hit that intro one to go up top drops it off across the middle for that What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treve from Treve Talks here for another episode of Treve Talks. First wide receiver we're going to be talking about, Keelan Cole. So what we're going to be doing in these outlooks is we're going to be naming the player we're going to be discussing, excuse me, and we're going to talk about their strengths, their weaknesses, and their overall grade as a player heading into 2019, at least in my opinion. So we started off with talking about Keelan Cole. Keelan Cole's strengths, he's a pure deep ball threat. He truly is. He can take the top off the defense very, very easily, and you've seen it a lot in 2018. You've seen it a lot in 2017. There are some times in 2018 where Keelan Cole managed to get wide open on a deep ball, whether that be a post, a streak, anything like that, just being able to take the top off, and Blake Bortles would miss him or he would drop it, but we're going to talk about the misses first. So now that he has Nick Foles, and Nick Foles and Keelan Cole have actually been kind of developing some sort of chemistry uh, during OTAs, every every day it seems like there's a report going around that Nick Foles threw a deep ball to Keelan Cole down the you know down the sidelines and it was complete. So it looks like that Keelan Cole is going to have a quarterback that's going to be able to get him the ball. And I think if anybody needs a bounce back year in 2019, it's Mr. Cole because you know last year he went from you know this leading wide receiver undrafted free agent that just completely balled out to a guy that was just kind of irrelevant. I mean, he had that big one-handed catch, but then after that, he was kind of nowhere to be heard of. He led the team in drops last year, and we're going to be diving into that right now with his weaknesses. His route running is not spectacular. He truly only has one route, and that's just to go deep and take the top off the defense, and he has the ability to do that with his speed, don't get me wrong, but when that's like your only move, you know, you're only useful for so many things, so, you know, the short intermediate routes, you know, he was never catching those balls and he was never really making a great play uh, in the short medium game for the Jaguars last year. So that's kind of a weakness to his game, a little bit of a flaw. And, you know, just his route running as a whole, like I said, he only really has one route that he runs and he goes deep and he tries to take the top off. And, you know, he's going to have to work his mid short game in order to be a really effective guy. And basically to really see the field in 2019, Keelan Cole needs to step up that part of his game. And, of course, the hands. The hands are a question mark. Of course, he had that spectacular one-handed catch, and, you know, that shows that he does have good hands when he wants to. But he also led the team in drops last year, and that's something that you can't get away with, and that will be a weakness. And being a wide receiver, you're going to need to have good hands. And Keelan Cole's a little bit questionable heading into next season. So, overall, I'm going to be giving Cole a C-plus as a wide receiver next year. I don't think he's going to be making a huge impact. In fact, I think he'll be fifth or sixth on the depth chart behind a lot of these guys that we're going to be talking about a little bit later. But he's going to have to prove himself again. Again in 2019 just like he did in 2017 if he wants to just a spot on the roster to be honest next year so Keelan Cole a C plus wide receiver uh, heading into 2019 it is not necessarily our best prospect at that position next up we got D.D. Westbrook D.D. Westbrook was a pleasant surprise in 2018 you know in 2017 he was a good player but you know he wasn't making the big splash plays that he was making in 2019 uh, from, you know, he made the big plays in the punt return to special teams game. You know, he was a pretty big part of the 
2017 team but in 2018 he really emerged as the number one wide receiver and the kind of wide receiver that he was during his time at Oklahoma where he was a Heisman Trophy finalist that a lot of people forget about you know there wasn't a better receiver in college football than D.D. Westbrook the time that he was nominated for that Heisman award so and you know he played with Baker Mayfield in Oklahoma a good quarterback that can get the ball out there deep and Nick Foles is another one of those guys and D.D. Westbrook definitely is a deep threat but he does a lot more uh, good than just that like Keelan Cole is just kind of a one trick pony you know he's just kind of a deep route runner dd westbrook has a lot in his arsenal and that's what we're going to talk about now we're going to talk about his strength his route running you know he can get open whether it be short whether it be mid or whether it be deep this guy has great feet he has the ability to be a really really good wide receiver like everything about his game from his route running to his hands is fantastic like his fundamentals is there like he's there to be a number one wide receiver everything that you need to be that guy that dude he has as far as the skill set goes you know the route running the ability to get open you know with his route running as well and his speed you know he has all of those intangibles to be a fantastic player in this league and to be able to get open and be an asset to Nick Foles next year and I'm very very excited to see what he has and his football IQ is huge too I put that down in his strengths you know uh when he knows where he's at on the field when he needs to make a toe tapping grab I've alluded to this play a lot but in London when we played the Eagles you know he had that toe tapper in the back of the end zone like that just shows perfect football smarts and it really shows kind of a overview of what D.D. Westbrook's game is really all about and he's built like a number one wide receiver as far as his intangibles go but his weakness is two things his two weaknesses are is the fact that he's going to have to go up against these top corners and you know you I don't know how D.D. Westbrook is going to perform you know against some of these elite corners like maybe like a Stephon Gilmore Xavier Rhodes you know uh Chris Chris Harris Jr., you know, all these elite corners, and obviously the Jags have Jalen and AJ, so he doesn't have to worry about them, but, you know, his ability to maybe get open on guys that have been here for a while, you know, guys that are locking down the, cer- the certain types of guys like Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, you know, those kind of guys. I don't know how he's going to be doing against those guys just yet, and I'm not yet, I'm not ready to say that he's going to be just above all great, fantastic until I see some tape against him in some really elite corners this year, and he's going to have the opportunity to do that against a lot of teams this year that have very, very solid corners to make a case on why he is a number one wide receiver or why he is a elite wide receiver maybe even. You know, he has an opportunity to do that. Uh, he needs to get open on these top corners, and Nick Foles needs to give him catchable balls and this guy is going to ball out that's why he gets a huge grade a b plus grade i think dd westbrook is going to be a huge part of this jaguar offense next year and i think he's going to be the number one wide receiver next year and he's going to have a lot of yards and a lot to say about his game next year and i'm very very excited to watch dd westbrook ball out in 2019 Next up, we got DJ Chark, my favorite roastee on all this on the whole Jaguar squad. I love roasting roasting DJ Chark the most. I just remember every year he'd do something just so weird and so bonkers that I'm like, why are you so awkward, bud? Like he just out there, he looks awkward, you know. And and something that I failed to mention with DD Westbrook, another weakness for him is size. And you know, a lot of wide receivers that the Jags have, if not all of them, <laughs> you know, if not all of them have really not great size and DJ Chark's another one of those guys you know he's really skinny he doesn't really have the body of a NFL wide receiver so that right there is a weakness his hands as well like I I don't know if you guys are going to remember this play but I think it was the Eagles he had the ball in his hands caught it and then basically threw it back like you should not be making plays like that if you're in the NFL as a wide receiver. So his hands are definitely a questionable thing. But there's a lot of hope in there because, you know, last year he was supposed to be this great addition to this Jaguar team. You know, he's a first-round prospect as a wide receiver, but he never really emerged as that kind of player. And it's not like he was injured. You know, he was on the field quite a bit. Like, he had opportunities to shine, and, you know, more often than not, he kind of choked under the limelight. But he does have very good speed and very good route running. So those are two things that you really need as a wide receiver, but probably the most important thing you need is hands. And DJ Chark's hands are a little bit questionable as of right now, so you really don't know what you're going to be getting with him. And that's why I got DJ Chark as a honest C- minus heading into 2019. I know a lot of you guys think that he has the potential to ball out and to really you know, change that and to show that he's not just a C minus, you know, wide receiver. But as of right now, from what I had to grade, what I have to grade him off of his 2018 season, which is his only past season, since this will be a second year, you know, I'm not too optimistic about 
DJ Chark next year, but hopefully he can prove me wrong, and hopefully he can have one hell of a year because this guy is one of my favorites. He's funny, he's good to watch, and you know he's he's great on Instagram and Twitter. So you know he's just an overall great guy. So a C minus grade for DJ Chark heading into 2019. Next up, we got the newest addition to the Jacksonville Jaguars, wide receiver Terrell Pryor. He finally signed the dotted line today, actually, to become uh, one of the Jaguars wide receivers. And I think he'll end up making the final roster. I think he's a vet. You know, he had to show some veteran presence. I wouldn't be surprised if the Jags kept 6-7. Uh, and then, you know, guys like Keelan Cole, who's kind of on the roster bubble, I wouldn't be surprised if a guy like Terrell Pryor kind of took his spot. But it's not to say Terrell Pryor has been dominant, you know, in his time as a wide receiver in the NFL, because he really hasn't been. You know, his hands have been a little questionable. Obviously, he's a quarterback transitioning to that position, so, you know, it's going to take a while. But he's been doing this for a while now, and he still has not really blown anybody out of the water he hasn't done anything too spectacular but he also hasn't really been on any teams that have had solid quarterbacks that could get him the ball so maybe now with an addition of like a Nick Foles you know Terrell Pryor can really come into his own and show why he is a good wide receiver and that's also something I like about him is he's a kind of a veteran in the game you know he's been around kind of for a while so he has a little bit of a brain so these young wide receivers can pick it and you know uh, show him around you know show him the styles of being an NFL wide receiver the Jags haven't had a guy that's you know been in the league for six seven years at the wide receiver position in a long long time so I think this is a very smart pickup by the Jaguars and I think that he's going to be a good addition for the Jags you know he's a veteran that's one of the things I said was his strengths and he has a a very very good speed but of course you know his hands and his injury issues you know ah god he does get in he gets injured quite a bit um so you know that's a little worrisome and that might prevent him from making the roster if he doesn't really do anything too spectacular so i'm going to be giving Terrell Pryor a c plus as a prospect heading into 2019 Uh, i'm not going to you know overrate him and say oh my god you know we signed this big name it's not even a big name we signed this free agent and he's going to be you know the be all end all he's going to save the franchise because he's really not you know because you can never rely on the guy to stay healthy so hopefully he can stay healthy because if he can he could be a decent to solid pickup for the jaguars in 2019 to be a reliable target for nick Foles. Next up, we got Chris Conley. Chris Conley, another free agent acquisition for the Jaguars and already has good chemistry with Nick Foles. They're both very good friends off the field and they spent some time together in Kansas City. So this addition did make sense. And I've been kind of excited to see what he has to offer because, you know, when Patrick Mahomes was his quarterback, I think he definitely opened up and showed a lot of potential. I think the Chiefs were kind of silly for letting him go because I think now that he, uh, with Tyreek Hill kind of being in that questionable situation, I think Chris Conley would have thrived in Kansas City's system, but it's Kansas City's loss, Jacksonville's gain, can't complain too much. The strength for Chris Conley is that he's very, very fast. He has really good speed, he's a good slot receiver option, and his hands are very solid too. You don't see him drop a lot of passes. I've, You know, before I made this video on Sunday, I kind of sat and watched a lot of film on these wide receivers, and you know, with Chris Conley, you don't see a lot of drops. Like he... If you throw him the ball and it's in his vicinity and it hits him in the hands, he's going to catch it. So that's something that we need. We need a reliable slot guy like that, and Chris Conley is that dude. However, his weakness is, is he's, his size isn't that great. Again, like all basically all these wide receivers, you know, none of their sizes are terrific, so I can't really say that's a huge weakness. But another thing is, is he hasn't been relied on really heavy uh, in his career. You know, he's been at Kansas City, and he's been kind of that – wide receiver that you know Mahomes throw to sometimes same thing with like Alex Smith threw to him sometimes but he never like blew you away stat wise and I think now that he's in Jacksonville and the fact that he's kind of surrounded by a lot of so-so guys his name's going to be called a lot more again especially because him and Nick Foles already got that chemistry kind of developed so I don't know how he's going to do when he's going to have to get his name called a lot especially with that small frame and maybe he'll get injured you know so that's a little questionable it's a little hairy for uh, Chris Conley but I think he's going to be a factor and I think he'll be a good uh, addition to this Jaguar team overall I'm going to be giving him a C plus as a whole prospect heading into 2019 and hopefully he can prove me wrong and you know rise up that scale and last but certainly not least we have the longest tenured Jaguar wide receiver Marquise Lee Marquise Lee is a guy I've talked about openly on here that I think is going to ball out and have a good year in 2019 especially with a new quarterback He's going to have Nick Foles in there. He's not going to have Blake Bortles. You know, he's not going to be limited. That's a big thing with Nick Foles and how I think he's going to help these quarterbacks is that he's not limited. You know, he can do everything just fine. He can do everything perfectly. Just fine. Like, I, that's why I don't understand all these people that are ranking the Jags so low on the list because they're like, oh, they just have Nick Foles. Like, 
just Nick Foles. Like, like you're just you're just gonna diss my dog like that. You're just gonna say, oh, he's just Nick Foles. Like, you're not gonna say Super Bowl MVP fucking Nick Foles. You know, one of the best performing quarterbacks in the playoffs in NFL history. I mean, he is. I mean, you can't really argue that. Like, I mean, there's obviously guys better than him that have been doing it longer and that, you know, have those accolades. Like, I mean, you got Tom Brady, obviously, Peyton Manning. But, I mean, Nick Foles beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, so what can you tell me there? Nick Foles is going to make these wide receivers good, and we're not here to talk about Nick Foles. We're here to talk about Marquise Lee. Marquise Lee's strength is route running. You know, everything that he does, and his special, he has a lot of specialties, but his specialties he does really well. He's good in the short-medium game, and he's really good at getting yards after the catch. He's not a guy that's going to burn you, you know, like 30 yards down the field, but the Jags do have some of those guys. But Marquise Lee is a guy that can take the ball 15 yards and turn it into a 30-yard gain. You know, he is able to do things very, very well after the catch. And I think this year is going to be no different. You know, he's going to be coming off an injury, which is going to be, you know, obviously a weakness because, you know, you don't know how he's going to do after that knee injury, you know, kept him out all of 2018. And then, you know, his hands have always kind of been a little questionable. You know, he has some drops. You know, there's been a couple of times you face palmed after a Marquise Lee drop, but, you know, he's been doing rehab for so long and, you know, he wants to get back out there and prove himself and show why he is a good wide receiver. I mean, the Jags just extended him. So, you know, he needs to go out there and show that he deserved that extension. He deserved that contract. And I think he will do that. These wide receivers, you know, are very, very decent group. You know, they're not anybody that's going to blow you away. But Marquise Lee is a prospect. I'm going to be giving him a B minus. I think it's him and D.D. Westbrook that are going to be running the show this year. And I'm very, very comfortable with those two. You know, would I be more comfortable with maybe like a bigger name wide receiver? Sure. But am I more, am I comfortable with what we have? Absolutely. I am very, very comfortable with D.D. Westbrook and Marquise Lee kind of being our leading guys next year. And I think you guys should be too because these are two very solid wide receivers for Nick Foles to throw to in 2019. Now let's give an overall grade to these wide receivers heading into 2019. I'm going to be giving these wide receivers a C plus, a grade that I've kind of been giving out a lot this video to a lot of prospects I don't think that any of these wide receivers are going to blow you out of the water I don't think you should draft any Jaguar wide receiver in your fantasy league this year I really don't I don't think the Jags really have a guy that's going to go over a thousand yards I don't think they do I think they have a couple of guys that can get you 500 600 yards and I think that's more of the game that the Jaguars are trying to play in 2019 I don't think they're looking for a guy that can get a thousand yards you know they're looking for multiple guys that can do a lot of things for them and I think they have the perfect group for that you know you got your deep threats you got your mid throw threats you know your short threats you know you have all these targets all around the field that do different things exceptionally exceptionally well and I'm very very excited to see these wide receivers play and hopefully they can end up getting better in the C plus grade at the end of the year but as of right now I'm not going to say that as a group that they're terrific fantastic but I'm going to say that they have potential to be good but I'm not ready to give them like a B or an A grade just yet so a C plus I think is even a little optimistic so a C plus for these Jaguar wide receivers heading in to 2019. And that was the position outlook for the Jaguars wide receivers. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Dream Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Dream Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.